Changing the Sales Game on webtalkradio.net. I'm your host, Connie Whitman. As always, you know, I'm thrilled that you're here. So I hope that you're with me on my mission. First of all, you see my mission, but you understand my mission that we are going to change that word sales from something that just comes from this sleazy manipulation perspective. We're going to change it of that. We're actually going to be coming from love, care, and respect. To help you on your mindset journey, of course, I have a gift for you, um, my free communication style assessment. I will put the information or the link in the show notes for you to get it easy peasy. The idea is you take the assessment, you find out what your natural communication superpowers are. You will also get a report spotlighting your blind spot. Both are kind of important, and I think this will help you ease your conversations with everybody you interact with, both personally and and professionally, but especially when we're in those sales conversations. So I hope that you enjoy my gift and it helps you move the needle on changing your sales game. Also, if you are loving the show, please, please rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. I love reading your notes. I appreciate your notes, and it's a nice way of sharing some love. Now, my motivational quote today to set the tone for the show is by Keith Ferrazzi. And Keith says, the currency of real networking is not greed, but generosity. And I find this so fascinating that so many of my private clients, as well as my corporate clients, they struggle with networking. Now, I found that most of my clients don't always know how to get invited and or how to choose the right network to be part of. Now, networking and referrals um, from happy clients have been my, I, I probably my number one core value and habit that I've created um, over the past decades that has helped me become so successful. Now, here's the deal. We all know how important networking is. Yes, whether you're a business or you work for an organization and you're a sales representative, doesn't matter. Having a community who know, like, and trust you is really key to that long-term success. So here's my question for you to kind of ponder as my guest and I talk about this topic today is, are you playing the long game? And hopefully your answer is yes, then this show is going to help you just move your needle and exponentially um, change your networking skills. Uh, now, my guest today is Blanca Perper. Uh, Blanca was a lawyer for 25 years, the inventor of a patented email uh, management system called Ingate, and the founder of the Laws of Life platform, a full-service digital marketing agency. So please help me welcome my brilliant, amazing friend, Blanca, to the show. So Blanca, thanks for being on. Thank you for having me, Connie. Such a pleasure and honor. Yeah, this Blanket man, you and I, we've been networking now for quite a few months, right? It's important. It's a skill. We need to do it. We need to get good out of it, but we need to do it correctly. So you're my go-to, you're my expert. That's that's why you're here, right? Let's talk about this. So what what have you found? Again, you've been doing this a long time too, right? You and I aren't newbies uh, to this game, but what have you found is your number one networking tool that just really works? Well, there's, there's, there's sort of two branches of the road to first go down. First, are you going to be the host or are you going to be the guest? So my number one while networking is to always be the host when you can. So you, I believe that everyone should have their own signature networking event if networking is key to the success of you building your brand. I have yet to find an exception to the rule. I think every professional, no matter what you do, needs to network. Um, I suppose corporate executives may not need to network because um, they have only one client, their corporation. But if, if you're the type of entrepreneur looking for a multitude of relationships um, to service and to build with, then I think the first decision is host your own event. That's my number one law of networking. And that's what I've done for the last three years is to host my own networking event. And it's been extremely powerful in building amazing relationships. And here's the thing too, Blanca, when you host it, you really become intimate. And I don't mean that in a weird way, right? Whenever I use that word, I kind of footnote it, but you get very mm -hmm. intimate. Like you, you got to know me really fast 
through the networking, right? And you've, you asked me to co-facilitate the one time we kind of focused on sales, whatever the topic was. So you really bring people into the fold. When you're the host, you can do that. When you're just joining, you're kind of subject to whatever the, the person who is hosting. It's so fascinating. As you were saying that, one of my corporate clients this was many years ago, I went to a local thing when we were still live and I went to a local networking event and several people from, it happened to be a bank, um, they were business development, they were market managers, right? So they, um, uh, they, they had to do networking to find businesses. And they walk up to me and they go, what are you doing here? And I looked at them and I go, I network too. Like, what do you think? I live in a shell and people just find me and knock on my door because they love me. I, they were like, oh, that makes sense. So I go, well, who are you meeting here? Small business owners. What do you think I am? It was really a one of those funnies in my life where I looked at them and I go, don't you think I have to network too? I, uh -huh. I just, you think I just teach it, but I don't do it. They were like, oh, this makes so much sense. It was just really a cute reaction. That's so awesome. I love it. We have love to network, it. right? It's it, it really is the bread and butter. And I just want to comment one last thing on you, sure. your idea of hosting. Then you can, not that we want to always hand pick because I don't know that that's good too. Sometimes the luck of the draw can bring magic into your life. But you can also attract the right kinds of people into your network um, that you know are going to build that no like trust factor and support, right? Come from that generosity from my, my quote um, this morning, right? It's about that generosity uh, first. So you could kind of create the container for the right people. I don't know. Does that make sense? Do you do, you do that to some extent? Absolutely. In fact, you're... And I, when you when you recited that quote, I actually got tears in my eyes because it was confirmation that that's exactly what networking boils down to yeah. is generosity. You have to be a giver. You cannot come from a mindset of lack. You cannot come from a mindset of you know equality. You know if you go into it like that, you you're going to be really disappointed. You got to give without expectation, build relationships to create and build collaboration. That's really what the joy of networking is, is to, I would say, find the mini collaboration. So when you came in to co-host with me and you were um, giving everyone feedback on their sales introductions, um, there's so many ways to collaborate with people and in a way, test the boundaries of the relationship. Do, does that person show up when they say they will? Do they show up for their meetings? Do they respect your time? And build a mini collaboration before jumping in too big of a pool. Well, and also, right, that gave me an opportunity to get to know the people in your network, number one. Number two, it gave an opportunity for me to kind of spotlight my coaching, right? On the fly, they were, they had random questions. You and I didn't know what questions they were going to ask, right? Or mm -hmm. what their comments were going to be. And then you and I had to respond to them. So there's an element of that, the coaching, why we're good coaches, right? Because you could do it on the fly. But here's the thing, they got to see who I was, but we knew where I knew coming in, don't sit, don't say, Hey, yeah, after this, why don't you connect with me? I can help you. Right. And then give them the pitch later. That's the ick. That's, it's not cool. That wasn't the platform. That wasn't what this networking was about. It was just me coming and helping. If I help someone wonderful, if I didn't, that's okay too. Right. So, but it's, it's the boundaries that we set with people so that we do, we, your hand picking again, this goes back to that hand picking. Yes. We pick generous people to be part of our orbit. And I think that's important. I don't want, I want the abundant mentality. I don't want the poverty mentality. 100%. And also go with who you, like you said, who do you, who do you generally connect with? Who do you feel a connection with? There's going to be, if you go into a room of a hundred people, certain people are, you're going to be drawn to for whatever reason, yeah. their personality, their physicality, the combination, something they said, their content, their pitch, their service. There's a million reasons, subliminal and subconscious of why we're attracted to another person. But the point is, you know who you're attracted to. And I, I'm not, and I'm talking spiritually. I'm talking magnetically. I'm talking intellectually. Absolutely. And in that, in that, in that word, 
And once you do that, then pick those people to continue to the next level of collaboration because not everybody you're going to have a connection with. And that's why people don't like networking because they say, you know, you're, you can't have an expectation that you're going to be having a connection with everyone. If you can just connect with one person, yes. you sound great. Gosh, I remember in the old days, um, went to a networking event and colleague, you know, would see at these things. And he said to me one day, he goes, um, my, my objective today, which I think you should always have an objective going into a networking event, whether it's live or Zoom. And, and he said, my objective today is to get everybody's business card. And I looked at him and I said, well, that sounds tiring and a waste of time. Why would you want everybody's business card? Because then we had real real business cards too. It wasn't always this digital stuff and link tree yeah. that you, you taught me, Blanca. But, and I laughed and he goes, well, what's your objective? I go, I just want to find two people that I think we can do something together, support each other in some way and start a conversation to get everybody's business card what a waste right so i kind of he, he probably thought i was an idiot as i chuckled and walked away because i thought he was an idiot you know <laughs> well you're absolutely right because what happens is the people that become email collectors and that means they're leading with their wallet and not their heart yeah. if you go into the meeting and you collect everyone's emails and then spam them with an offer and then they ask me blanca why didn't i get a reaction because you never made a connection that's why <sighs> Yeah. It's all about yeah. human to human connection. hundred percent. All right. Next question. This, this one, I'm really curious mm -hmm. because I know you are big into doing the webcasting. Mm -hmm. How have you, how is that playing that, that webcasting and the networking? Like, how does it lead from one to the other? Sure. Well, webcasting gives you instant brand credibility in your niche. So webcasting, it's also very, very good because you get a lot of epiphanies when you webcast. Um, you, you, you get a lot of laws of life, a lot of, a lot of new creative ideas when you engage in dialogue and interview people. And you become a better connector through webcasting. You have better intuitive skills as to who you are connecting with. Now, how does webcasting relate to networking? is normally when I'm networking, when I have that connection to someone, I just like them. I want to get to know them better. And um, I will invite them as a guest on one of our webcasts in our network. And then I will interview them or maybe they'll be the guest of honor like you were at the Tuesday Log of Life talk show. Yep. And that, that's how they relate. So the networking introduces me to them. And the webcasting allows me to get to know them even more. Give me an example of how you, what, what topic or how you webcast. Just share that with me. Like, what are some of your go-to topics? Well, every, every topic is completely guided and spontaneous based on the laws of life of the guest. So we have 28 webcasts in our show collection. We have my signature show, The Laws of Life Talk. We have uh, the laws of love with a life coach, the laws of sex. We have the laws of um, empowering entrepreneurs that I do with Natan every Thursday at 11. So every Thursday, for example, with Natan and I, um, usually the expertise of the guests will lead the theme of the show. And also the questions that the audience asks of the guests. Like last week, we had an incredible Dr. Grant on the show, and everybody was just wildly excited about his technology. He can do a, a 388-page scan based on a 15-second voice recording and give you a complete assessment. And Natan and his wife, Carolyn, have now, after that show, uh, become a licensee and they've purchased that equipment. So you just never know what's going to happen. Another show we did was with Ken Course, expert to the experts. He's a land key. He is also a lifetime instructor in the Essential Academy. And he makes brilliant landing pages, workshops, workbooks. He helped and it led that webcast led to the creation of our irresistible offer webinar. And Natan, Ken, and I did a combination service bundle and did a six-hour irresistible offer webinar because of that show. So what I'm so networking, webcasting, and then another collaboration is the ultimate climb to success. And and you know you described it so beautifully too. It's easy 
it's easy because here, why, here's why it's easy. Everybody's going, what? That didn't sound easy. Sure it is. <laughs> you, have, you host this webcast. There's questions that are asked. People have real problems that they need solutions to. Mm -hmm. And a course is created or another collaboration or a, potentially a new client right on the spot. Because as you're answering their questions, they're thinking, oh my God, this is exactly what I need. It's funny. I have a, a membership site and we meet twice a month. So it's not just for me to answer. Like I want the collaboration of the group because you have all these brilliant minds, you know, together. And the one young lady, she, we keep connecting and reconnecting and reconnecting and she's in my orbit. So she, the other day she emailed me, she goes, you know, I'm trying to get into corporate clients and I feel like I have everything, but I don't have everything. I understood what she was saying. Can we jump on a call? So I said, I'm like, yeah, I'll give you an hour, right? No, no strings attached. By the end, she hired me. So it, that's the kind of thing you never know what's going to happen. Number one, when you're generous, but when you're having conversations, <laughs> when you're having conversations and people do the no, no, like trust again, I'm going to go back to what I started with at the show notes, right? They know they like you and they trust you. They let their barriers down. So when you're having those one-on-one -on -one conversations, all of a sudden they're like, yeah, yeah, you get me. Yeah. Yeah. You're the one I need, but it starts with. I met her in a networking event and it, it wasn't like we went from networking to hiring me. There was a whole bunch of stuff that went on within that. That's what you're talking about. You use the webcasting, right? And your different shows, like yes. my podcast too. It's another, another venue to help build yes. um, your, your um, team, right? Your, your uh, network of people. So it's, it's a lot of moving parts, but it's easy when you start from a place of generosity and just, Hey, I want to get to know you. Literally, how do you want to get to know you? How can we how can we support each other? Go ahead. A hundred percent. And when you invite someone to be interviewed, they'll never say no. Everybody wants to be interviewed and everybody wants to engage in a beautiful dialogue about what their wisdom or their laws of life are. And and you never know what it will lead to next. You don't. And the better people get to know you in a easy platform, right? Where it's just conversation, usually network, especially on zoom nowadays, it's very, you know, you do the breakout rooms, but it's very conversational, which I think is nice. Whereas when you're live, sometimes you're awkward as to when to walk away. When mm. you're in a breakout room, the timer is there. It kind of forces you, uh, forces the hands back so you can meet more people. So I, I kind of like the zoom networking because you can really start to listen to what people are saying saying in the room and then zone into the people that you think, wow, I think we have the same client. We're doing two different things. Maybe we could support each other, right? Or whatever, whatever the outcome is. Um, another question for you. W you know, we talked about your number one uh, strategy for what was the, my question, uh, that your networking tool. Sure. What is, when you talked about hosting now, we want to focus on that for a minute. What is your number one strategy as you set that container up, you as the host, because you do a really nice job, Blanca, of getting everyone to talk. You control the, the uh, time frame. You're very good at controlling so people don't go off on tangents. But what is your number one strategy as a host to create the safe platform, but also the, the high engagement that you get? Thank you. Well, the, I think the key, the key is, like you said, keeping it interactive. People only will stay if they feel their voice is heard. That's, that's what it means to be human. We have yeah. a deep desire to be heard. And so therefore I do use the Zoom app. It's a timer, it's a free app. For those of you who don't know, Zoom has thousands of apps in its app store, many of which are free. So I use the timer app and I go around, I call it popcorn style. I want the conversation to pop. I want lots of different voices, pop, pop, pop on, on an issue. So I do control the time. I give guests 30 seconds or 60 seconds, depending on how many people are in the meeting. And then we also have segment hosts. We have uh, Cody Wooten, The Laws of Leadership, Patty Sulin, Living Your Best Dash Life, Tony Kaufman, The Laws of Selling from the Stage, and Natan, The Laws of Potential Academy. And they each get two minutes to speak about a topic in their niche. So we actually do about seven or eight mini segments. And then we sprinkle the guests through those mini segments. We also go into breakouts for a longer dialogue, but the key is let everybody have a voice. 
you do a really nice job of monitoring it and keeping it moving. And it's, it, it's good because then you really do, cause it's that 30 seconds, right? That we, we have to get better at short, concise communication. So mm -hmm. that forces people to show up, especially, you know, second time with you, they're like, well, I better, I better show up prepared, right? Otherwise I'm going to get the, uh, the hook, but it's great because being a person in the room from a networking perspective, I'm not going to want to meet everybody in the room. They're not my client or I'm not their client potentially, mm -hmm. or they're not going to be able to help me. And some of them will be able to help me with whatever and they could, I could potentially be their client. So it gives you a real nice, like a round robin opportunity to find the right people that you need to talk to after the event. You just do a really nice job with that. Thank you so much. Well, a lot of it's been practice and, you know, I'm continuously looking for new segment hosts. I'm looking for people that want to come on Tuesdays and be a part of the show and make it better. I'm looking for DJs. We occasionally have singers. I'm totally have an open mind to anybody that wants to connect to be a part of it. That one young man was fabulous, that saying. He was fabulous. Yeah. Beautiful voice for um, just, yeah. Wishing him tons of luck in his career. Yeah. It's fun, but see, that's fun. People listening are going, wait, what? Somebody sang what? How, how did that happen? Right? Exactly. I love it. Patterning. I, I, I heard him on Instagram and I sent him a message and I said, I think you're an amazing singer. Would you come on Tuesday and sing for us? And so he did. So we make, we make new friends. When you see people do something amazing on social media, send them a message, tell them, connect with them. Yeah, I love it. And then invite them, right, to become part of, get to know you and your community. Because if you like them, chances are the peeps in your community will like him too, right? It's, it becomes this win-win. It was funny because I think by the end of that too, I think I asked the question, do you do jingles? I go, or is that like below you? Because he's, you know, he's he writes songs and he sings and he performs and he has albums out there. I don't know if I'm dating myself, <laughs> albums, but you know what I'm saying? He has, yeah. he has music out in the world. Yeah. But somebody by the end said, you know, I need to redo the music for and what it workshop or something. So I think ironically, he ended up getting business from it. And that was, you asked him to come and sing. That's the magic of networking. You never know what's going to happen. Well, I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear the follow-up. And that's what it's all about. Generous, let everybody in the room connect with one another. Yeah. Let, you know, let them be happy. Let them form friendships. And we all elevate and empower one of them. Uh, always. It has to be about rising ships, right? We we want to we want to ride that tide, baby. What has been the key elements to building this platform? Was there technology? Like what what did it really take? Because it you you got it down to a science. Oh well, thank you. Well, I knew I had a choice, and this is the fundamental question I tell everybody. If you're going to have a business and you want to do marketing and build your digital identity, you have to answer one very simple question. Either A, you're going to learn how to do it yourself, or B, you're going to pay someone to do it for you. Yeah. And I knew I wanted to have a Roku television channel, and I wanted to have a collection of many, many, many shows to become an expert broadcaster, live streamer, and talk show host. And so I knew to produce 28 shows would cost me you know, a couple, it would be millions to do that. And um, so I, I had to think, how can I do this and achieve this goal of building my agency in the most cost-effective way? So I basically self-taught myself live streaming and digital marketing. And it took me about a year to 18 months to learn everything myself. So as I learned, I practiced. As I learned, I practiced. And now it's been um, five years. And um, so I would say, number one is I, I did teach myself the skills. And now I've recently created a new course called the Self-Powered Entrepreneur, which is a six-month course where I teach everybody everything I know about how to build your platform. And I'll also be speaking on this topic at Tony Kaufman's Vegas event. But the bottom line is you need a great website and to constantly update it, you need webcasts, podcasts and networking. So I would say those are the core elements. And if you do those four things, maybe write a book if you're uh, writing, but use every tool in the toolbox to lift up your platform. 
and they all have to work together. And I think that's the other thing by you learning firsthand, you know, COVID allowed a lot of learning time, right? I did mm -hmm. like you, I took marketing classes because sales and marketing, you know, this, right. They're very different things. Marketing gets them in the door. The sales conversation is whether you, where you discern whether the client's a good fit for you, if you can help them, all those things, and then actually have the sales conversation and ask for the business, but it's a process. And I was really, um, not aware. And I didn't have good marketing for myself. Like I, I didn't know what my brand was. So I did a lot of marketing classes as well. I did hire people because I don't ever want to do WordPress and any of that, t the technology, not my jam at all, but I know what to ask and I know what to look for. So I yeah. always think as a business owner, you should educate yourself. You could decide not to do like I did not to do a website myself, but at least I knew what to expect, what to look for. I had done my own research. Does that make sense, Blanca? A hundred percent. To be an educated entrepreneur is important. I'm never, you know, there are certain areas of the business that I'm not going to master. I'm never going to be a professional accountant, right? It's just never going to happen. Because number one, I have no interest in that topic. Right. But I, we have to watch a few videos. We have to educate ourselves. We have to know um, so we need, you know, you also have to self-educate in those areas that you do outsource so that you make sure you're paying the right amount. You're not overpaying for the service and you're getting what you need done to protect your business. Definitely. Absolutely. The, what do you, what do you think, um, if you look back now, you said you've been doing this five years, what has been your biggest gain, like tangible gain that you can go, yeah, it started with the networking. Like, mm -hmm. do you have an example for us? I think that's tangible for people. Net, well, net, network you, in terms of achieving sales and success, business success. Or You tell me, what do you think was your biggest gain as it relates to your networking efforts over the past five years? Well, my, my, my biggest gain has been uh, with the networking is just forming the best relationships that I've ever formed in my life that have led to tremendous business success and the opportunity to be of service to individuals and businesses. And it does, like you said, are we in this for the long play? I am playing the long game. I've always played the long game. That's how I've always played it. I, um, and because, because I want to lead with my heart and I want to work with people that I enjoy spending time with and being of service. But networking by far has been the most powerful community, uh, the most powerful tool to building my the success of my digital brand. Yeah, and it's, be, it's being visible. It's that ripple effect, you know, and, and I'm sure you've heard this. I have clients that they're following me for a year. They see me speak. Let's say they saw me speak at your networking or I answered a question at that networking event. Then they go, oh, Connie has a podcast. Let me, let me tune into our podcast, right? They start listening to the podcast. And, and here's the cool thing. And you know this too, Blanca, running a podcast, right? I do my two podcasts weekly. They're weekly shows. So eight podcasts a month. It's really hard to be not who you are when you do eight shows a month. So the, the podcast is such an honest, plus people are usually listening with earbuds. So it becomes very intimate and personal that it's like you're talking to them. So it, it's very hard to, to not be yourself, right? So that's the other thing. So people will follow me and then I do a workshop and at the end I have my offer, right? My $2,000 program for the nine weeks. And then they'll, they'll, hire me. And I'll say, Oh, now remember, I, I don't know they were in your audience. Maybe I answered if I haven't talked to them in a year, I don't know they're following the show. And then they come to this workshop and they buy and I go, Oh, how did you find me? They go, I've been following you for a year. Really? I go, oh my God, I'm so excited. What, you know, what turned you on? And they're like, Oh my God, we listened to your podcast. And it's like, she's talking to me again. She's talking to me. I'm the right person for them. So it's, it's this subconscious energy that we put out there but it matters. Like everybody has a phone. Everybody has a phone. Everybody has an opportunity to see you and listen to you, especially in different venues. They really get to know you before they even have an opportunity to hire you. Right. hundred percent. That's, that's really, that's, that's the key to building the trust. And oftentimes the networking piece will kick off that exposure or the webcast will kick off that exposure. And then people get to know you 
and they see what you're creating through through your artistic digital expression, whether it's a webcast, a podcast, a book, an interview. And it's a great way for people to get to know you. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful story. It well, and but it's but see, that's how it works, right? It's this very intangible, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Because it's all going on behind the scenes, but that's the way magic works, right? That's the way the universe works, whatever you want to call it. I call it magic. I love magic in my life, right? But, um, but, but that's just, that's the reality. You meet people and you never know when the opportunity or it's going to strike and it's going to be, oh, I got to, I have to call blank or I have to call Connie. She, this is, this is the perfect project for us to work on. We might not have talked for three months. So, but it, that's the idea. It's all that magic that goes on that energetic exchange that's happening behind the scenes. We don't even know what's happening, but we can contribute to it. Like you just said, using webcasting, using podcasting, using um, uh, your, your business, your branding, your, you know, LinkedIn articles that you might write. You do a lot on Facebook too. You do a lot of Facebook lives. I do. I try to go live several mornings a week and I let people know, and you know, it's not only talking about the sunny shine news. It's, you know, also just being real and authentic. You know, sometimes you're having a, a bad morning, you you share about it. What what can you learn? Because believe it or not, going live is great for the soul because you're connecting with your community. You're connecting with the people that follow you. You're having a conversation. And it's not, it's not about anything but connecting. If you lead with the heart and connect, everything else will follow. You know, Blanca, you preach to the choir, sister. I love it. And it's true. And it's it's as easy as that. I think we make it more complicated because we think it should be more complicated to get business. You know, business development, everything we're talking about, networking. And here's the other thing for me, meeting people, fun. And, and just as we close, I just have to share with you, I have a friend out in the Pacific Northwest and he has a networking um, that I belong to. It's intro, It's networking for introverts. And I cracked up, he invited me and I said, you know, I'm not an introvert. He said, yeah, he goes, but you're very generous, Con. And I think that introverts can learn from you. And here's the kicker. Most introverts make really, really good salespeople and business owners because they're very good at listening because they're used to sitting back and observing. So when, when you say things like this, they go, really? How? And you have these great conversations. So you never know where I was like, really? Introvert? <laughs> and can I tell you? I'm, I'm meeting amazing people. I'm referring to them because I think they're amazing at what they do. Um, they're, they're referring to me. So again, you think that's really probably not the right network for me. Test it. That's my other always recommendation to uh, Blanca. Test the network. See if it's your fit vibe with people. Um, because again, it's all that energetic exchange that, that happens. What, do you feel the same way when you're picking networking groups that you want to attend or you want to join? join? Absolutely. Well, I, I, I've given many of my groups, I, I do believe in consistently showing up. I Agreed. don't jump around to too many different groups, Neither. but I think every six months, I think you should make a commitment to a group for a minimum of six months. I agree and with that. And then look at it and see, you know, how's it working? How have the people been? Um, did you get any business from the group? I mean, obviously if you're not getting any business from the group, maybe, you know, it's not the right group. Um, but it, you could be getting no business, but meeting amazing friends. So you just, it's always, it's always a mixed bag, but yes, you should test. You should definitely test. And, but I'll tell you one thing, if you think showing up three times is enough, you're fooling yourself. Cause I have people that have been coming for three years and they're still getting business from the laws of like networking group. And most importantly, we're building friendships based on authenticity, trust, and liking each other. Yeah. And so our circle getting more, I guess you could say that we're going to deeper and higher levels now because we've continued to show up for each other as long as we have. So you can't just drop in once and say nothing happened. You have yeah. to make at least a six-month commitment and then assess. 
And, and very smart. Um, well said, like Tony, I met you through Tony through her week of kindness. Yeah. I think, I think she's going to do it again in January. That'll be my third or fourth time with her. And last time, you know, as I was meeting people and I said, you know, Tony's really good about stage. She teaches a lot during the pro, you know, during the uh, week of kindness as well for you as one of the presenters. And she's just a love to work with because she's a joy. She's just one of those kinds of people out there that you want to be around. Um, so see, I refer to her a ton be, and it's never about the money, right? Blanca? It's, it's because what she's doing and you see what people need in my network. And I'm like, Hey, bring you over here. It's about sharing that wealth as well, as well as sharing each other. Um, because that's really when the magic starts happening too, right? Where we could, you know, kind of commingle each other into the fold. 100%. Yeah. I love it. Our time is up, but guys, here's the deal. Um, you need more Blanca in your life. She's in my life. I already got her. So I highly recommend you joining her world as well. <laughs> her web- <laughs> I'm selfish, see, but I do Thank share. You. I do share nicely, Blanca. So uh, Blanca's website is lawsoflife.shop. And her email, if you have a specific question, please reach out to her. She is lovely and she's very responsive. Um, it's Blanca at lawsoflife.shop. And she has a free gift. I will put it in the network, um, in the network. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. I'll put it in the show notes, but it's to your networking um, platform, right? It's free access. Can you just talk a little bit about it? What, yeah. what, yeah, what they get? Every Tuesday at 11 by subscribing on the link in the notes of Connie's show, you will receive the link to enter into the Zoom networking of the laws of life every Tuesday from 11 a.m. Eastern to 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Yes, you will see me there when I'm not training at my corporate clients. Blanca, she's in my... She's my, my backup when I'm not training. She's my, my go-to person. So you'll see me there too. We can have some fun. Uh, thank you, Blanca, for that's very generous for you to offer that. So anybody that's serious about networking, this is a great one to jump into. Everyone is just lovely and sharing and safe and just, I can't say enough good things. So I do highly recommend if you're thinking about networking or trying to find the right network to join, I highly recommend testing this one out. So Blanca, thank you for being so generous and sharing that with my, my peeps. Oh, thank you for having me. Always a joy spending time with you. You too, Connie. You're truly an inspiration. Thank you. Back at you, my friends. Um, thank you again for being on and taking the time out of your busy day. I hope everyone found value in our conversation. Networking, I believe, is the core of, of a successful career because you need your people when you try to change companies too, as well as a business owner to keep you not only surviving, but thriving. It really does come down to networking. So thank you again, Blanca. And thank you all uh, for joining me uh, today. And I hope you continue to tune in to change the sales game with me, your host, Connie Whitman on webtalkradio.net. I really wish everyone a wonderful, inspired week and join Blanca's network. Come and play, right? I'll be there um, probably six out of 10 times. So come and play, see what it's about. Um, Join us, learn, and let's grow together. That's where the magic happens. It's always in growth. I'll see you next week. I'm honored that you join me weekly and I wish you a wonderful week. Take care, everybody. See you next week. Bye. (laughs) 